ignition primary current testing. Now this is a test we've used repeatedly and we find it to be very productive. But as always, we've got to talk about when to use a test. And you use this test after you've tried your routine diagnostics. Whatever you do that's worked effectively for you in the past, try to solve this problem as quickly as possible. And only when that test doesn't work do you pull out your big guns. Now, what you're going to be looking for is you do this when you suspect an ignition problem caused by the B-plus supply, circuit wiring, coil primary resistance, connectors, or ground problem. We found a lot of connector problems. They wouldn't show up any other way. We'll show you an example of why it doesn't show up with a voltmeter a little later. But let's talk about this low current probe. The low current probe changes current flow, or amps, into a signal that can be displayed on a lab scope, or DSO. Low current probes are directional, so observe polarity, and if you make a mistake, you can change your direction if the scope traces upside down and go in the wrong direction. For instance, if we're looking at in current flow in the primary, we know when primary is off, it's zero amps, and it increases when we turn primary current on. So if it goes the wrong direction, don't fret, just turn it over. You can make it work either way. Let's look at why we'd be using this. Here's a problem car somebody called us out on and said, it's got some misfire codes and they can't figure out why they've cleaned the injectors and they've done all the routine tests as we preached to you to do. But they couldn't find out why. They swapped some coils around and did some other work on here to try to make the misfire go away. It wouldn't go away. We found primary current to be low. Surprisingly, it's low on two coils. And this particular case, you can absolutely positively see why primary current was low. Now, let's talk about why you couldn't find this. Going back at the connector to the other end, B plus is good coming into the connector into this base unit. The problem shows up getting the power to the coil itself. We had to replace the coils and this base unit both because the corrosion you see here is also in the coils. We got here by using primary current. Now let's go see how to use that to diagnose problems like this. And we're going to start off by placing the low current probe around the ignition's B plus wiring. Now this ignition module brings B plus in and pin P in a pink wire. You see our low amps probe connected around the wire. Now keep in mind, these low amps probes are directional. If you put them on the wrong direction, they tend to go downward rather than up. Current flow increases. Starts at zero and goes up. If you have them backwards, it starts at zero and goes down. Simply turn the probe around, reverse it, and you'll correct the problem. Now you could also put this on pin K, the black wire for ground, because all the current flow for this module, to turn the ignition coils off and on, is going to flow through that black wire. Either one will work, but whatever you do, you must start with a vehicle schematic like this so you know what you've got. We go with a fairly slow trace. Start off at about one millisecond per division, and you may even have to get slower than that. And adjust your sweep rate so you can see all the coil event. We have a six cylinder car with DIS. It means we have three separate coils. If we were working with a coil on plug, we might be looking at four, six, eight, whatever combination we might have on a particular uh, wiring to supply B plus or ground. Now we can go and measure the current flow in all three of them, or we can speed up our trace and do some more detailed work. But you gotta ensure that all of these are even and they're all there. Sometimes you find one that's missing. You don't say, wow, well, how, how do I only have two when I got a, a six-cylinder engine? And that's because one of your coils is not firing. Now, if we speed it up to two milliseconds per division, we wind up looking at a pattern like this. We get to see the rise time where it's going up, and it flattens out and then turns off. We can go to the top and measure it here. We can measure other places. We're going to compare this to specifications. If you do not use vehicle-specific spe specifications, you say, I'm going to compare the current flow for all three, four coils, whatever you have. That's fine, except you will not find low B plus. You will not find bad grounds that are common to all coils if you don't use a specification. In this particular specification, we're looking for peak amps of 9.5 amps. 
When we look at the rise time, we find we have a rise time of three milliseconds, exactly what we were expecting to look for on this particular vehicle. If the peak amps are not within specifications, test the power and grounds before condemning the coil. If the rise time is not right, we're going to show you some more stuff about rise time. We're going to look at some of the details about this. We're going to look for these oscillations first. If they're missing, like in our example here of the bad one, you may have a bad coil. We have seen a few coils where they're very small and the coil is still good. You can determine that by also looking at the secondary ignition information. But it's a good indication. If these are very weak or missing, you probably have a bad coil. Now in a coil unplug, it's exactly the same thing as what we just did. With DIS, we've got two plugs connected to each coil. With coil unplug, we have one. They fire half as often, but they still have things in common. We are, in this particular case, we've got a GM coil near plug. It's an individual coil mounted up here just above the spark plug and connects to the spark plug through a wire and then finally the spark plug. So we have all the same things we've had before. We have spark plugs that can develop carbon track. Happened before, will happen again. Happens with any ignition system. This particular system, along with several others, have four wires. In a four-wire system, let us show you what we have. It's different than some of the two-wire systems. This is a complete schematic with all eight cylinders. What we see here is we have two different injector and ignition fuses. Each one of these fuses supply four coils and four fuel injectors. So by connecting into that pink wire or into that injector A fuse, we could get ignition current waveforms with our low current probe for those four coils and those four injectors all at the same time. Now you may not want to do that. It may become too confusing. You may want to go to that splice 152 which separates it into the four coils and check at that point where you'd be checking just the ignition coils. Sometimes you get more information on the screen you want. But let's cut this in half and look at it. And let's talk about diagnostic directions. Notice we have splices here. We've got a splice right at ground 105 that supplies common ground to all of the coil packs for coil 1, 3, 5, and 7, one side of the engine. We have B plus at splice 152 going to all four of these coils. On the other side, we've got a reference low with a splice going bringing all four of these coils back to the PCM. Now let's think diagnostically for a moment. We say we make a measurement, we want that measurement to give us a diagnostic direction. So when we start thinking like that, look at this and say, boy, if I have a common problem on several coils, suspect one of these splices. Splices are better than they used to be, but they're still not infallible. They still are weaker than the wiring in many cases. Look at this combination of wiring and see if there is a pattern that identifies from something for you. Remember, we keep stressing when you take a reading, get a diagnostic direction. Now, let's say we look at individual spark plug coil packs. This particular vehicle has got four individual control systems and a reference ground back to the computer. When we hook up our test equipment, we're going to hook our amps probe around the pink wire in this case that's going back to B+. We can hook our voltage probe to the control signal coming from the PCM. So our low current probe, we got the direction right. We're going to hook it around B+. Ignition control, we're going to go around the ignition control signal. And we're going to be measuring voltage. The negative DSO lead went to the engine ground, so we have a good ground. Now we've got our signals here, top trace on amperage. That's current flow. This particular one is going up to about 5 amps. How do I know that? That is a 10 amp scale. So it's going up to about 5 amps on this particular system here. The bottom is the ignition control system. Now we told you about rise time. Look at the ignition control system. When it goes up, current flow starts up. When it goes down, current flow turns off. What this tells us is that the PCM with its control signal is in total control of on time for this particular system in this particular make and model of vehicle. If this is wrong and we're getting too little on time for current flow, it is a problem with the PCM. And remember, we're telling you every signal is going to give you a diagnostic direction. So our control signal voltage, if it is too short, we don't have enough time. It's because the PCM 
has decided that's how short the time should be. There's something wrong with the PCM. If the current flow isn't high enough on the top, it's because we have a B-plus problem, we have a ground problem, or we have a coil that has the wrong resistance or has a connection that's corroded. One set of readings here, we get very quickly, and we have a lot of different directions. And every direction, every reading will give us a specific diagnostic direction to take. Let's blow this up a bit and look at it. Look how the coil primary follows exactly what we're doing with our second with our control signal. Now let's talk more about that control signal. It turns off when we turn off. It is going to be about 4.25 volts. That's approximate. It's never really five, like quote unquote the book says. There's some more stuff we know about this. It's got to have a good ground. If it doesn't have a good ground, the reference low signal, that splice going to the computer with four coils will be the place to look for that. Remember, it's got its own ground separate from the ground for the DIS module. It has a reference low circuit. If the coil control signal isn't present, go look at the PCM. Now here's some reports we've seen and we pretty well nailed down. If this voltage is lower than four volts, the coil pack is pulling the signal low and will be causing a misfire and replacing the coil fixes the problem. Let me say that again. We're running 4.25 here, just a little above the 4 volt level. If this gets under 4 volt, actually 4 volts or less, the coil pack is likely pulling the signal low, causing a misfire. Remember, there's electronics in this coil pack. The electronics is going to take this 5 volt signal and turn current flow off and on for the coil primary. You don't get to see coil primary in this case. It's all inside of there. Toyota and some other people use this type of coil pack. When it's under 4 volts, the coil pack is pulling the signal down, and it's the root of the problem. Peak amp should be around 5 on this particular one, and it says 4.8 to 5.3. Bingo, we have 5. We're right in the middle of the specs. Our on time is 3.2 to 3.7 milliseconds. We know that's coming from the PCM. So look at all the diagnostic directions we have. With each measurement we take, we're getting a direction. If it's wrong, where we're going to go. If B plus is low, we're going to check for low B. Amperage is low, we're going to check for low B plus, bad ground, high primary resistance. If we're too straight and we go too high, you notice the slope. We're going up slowly. When we have a shorted coil, it goes up much faster. If they're lower than normal, we're going to go look at the red wire. We're going to go look at the black wire for grounds. Are they there? Is there a common pattern? We should be within 0.5 volts of B+. Plus. Look at the grounds. We should be less than 50 millivolts. Is it common to all of them or common to one? If it's common to only one coil pack, we know it has to be up to splice 156. Look at the diagram. Look at your reading. Get a diagnostic direction. If only coil one has low current flow and has high ground voltage, it's the black wire going from pin A over to splice 156 that has the problem. Look for corrosion on that connector. Look for problems in that single wire. If it is after splice 156, it's going to affect more than one coil. If they're all normal and low primary, you got to go check the primary's resistance, and you're going to need a good spec for that. To do it, you go and measure the ohms from pin A to pin D on this particular vehicle and measure the resistance. Compare the resistance of a bad coil and a good coil. That's the best way. As we've looked at the specs, most of the specifications we find, because of different vendors supplying parts that are not identical, it's safer to measure different coils. We've got four of them on right here together. It's pretty easy to measure. Now, two-wire coil systems, like there are many manufacturers like Ford and Chrysler that use this simpler coil-on plug configuration. B-plus is supplied it to the ground side, and the ground circuit is grounded by the PCM. A driver in a PCM will turn the coil current off and on. So it's simpler, easier to use. Here's an example of that. Have one of these for each spark plug and they're going to go directly to the plug. We have the same carbon tracking problems here we've had in the past. We have the same secondary insulation problems where the secondary causes problems we've had in the past. And why is that? It's because we have high voltages caused by lean mixtures. We got to say this over and over. One of the frequent failures we have found is on vehicles that run very lean and have high KV. We wind up having high failure rates 
on the coil on plugs, particularly in environments where they're very hot. This is under a great deal of stress, and high KV stresses it just like it did our plug wires, just like it did the secondary ignition in the coils we've always had. These are just exposed to even more heat than we had before. Each one of these connectors has two wires. Here we've got a green and we've got a pink. This is a diagram for a Ford showing us how they look. On one side we have B+, plus. that's on the left. We have two splices. We got a couple capacitors in there. They're to limit the noise and usually don't cause any problems. If you have something common to all eight cylinders, look something earlier than splice 161. Anytime you're looking at a diagram like this, vehicle specific, see if you can see any patterns, and we cannot stress that enough as to how important that is going to be for you. We're looking here and saying, in this area, this is our common B plus signal. If, if only one coil is involved, it's to the right of the splices. If more than one coil is involved, it's either the splice or to the left of those splices. Control signals. If there isn't a common circuit for the control signal, then the individual ground is controlled for each coil. And you'll see a primary waveform pattern there, just like you would get. It's a single primary waveform. Keep in mind, in this particular case, let's mention one other thing. Look at the bottom of the PCM, ground 25, pin 25. All the current for all these coils flows through that ground circuit back to front of the left front fender. If that is bad, it's going to affect all of these ground circuits. So be aware, in this case, the PCM is going to have to handle all of that current flow. Now this is a Ford system. There is a, this is a multi-strike ignition system also called a multi-spark ignition system. Sometimes we have three like this at idle. Other times we get one and a half, two at idle. It depends on conditions. We come off idle, we'll go to one strike. The first strike is what we use for our measurement of our current flow. And it can vary with each one of them, but only the first strike is the one we're looking at. And as you can tell, this is running about seven and a half amps. We go off idle a little bit, the other ones shrink down. They do three strikes to get better combustion at low engine speeds. Once we bring it up, we have a look at it and we discuss it. Remember, this is a two-wire system. The rise time is totally controlled by the PCM. The height is controlled by B+, the quality of ground on the computer and getting back to the PCM, and the B+, supplied. So remember, there's a lot of things involved. This should be 6.5 to 7.7. .7. It's 7.5 amps. It's right where we would expect it. If the current flow is low, look on the top of the coil for cracks and bubbling of the seal. This is one of the things we've seen on Ford from high temperature operation. They get cracking and bubbling and moisture gets inside and it goes to changing resistance of the wiring. The rise time should be the specification 1.3 to 1.7. This is 1.4. But again, remember, that is controlled by the PCM. If that's wrong, look at the PCM. It's the source of this information. Now, the, how fast this rises is a function of coil resistance. Rising fast and sloping off later is usually a sign we have a shorted coil. And that usually winds up with a slightly higher than normal current, voltage, uh, current flow. If the peak amps are lower than normal, we're going to go back to our same thing. We're going to check the coil's B plus supply, looking at the patterns of failures and seeing what's going on. Low primary current, you need to go check the coil's resistance, and we're going to have to go and measure it across the coil. Measure these two wires. The, resist the, the specification says the coil resistance should be a half ohm between the red and the green wire. Here we're reading 3.67 ohms. That's not a half, so if I were you, I would check a couple coils and compare each a couple of coils, a good and a bad, to see which one I think is the problem. This ends the coil primary current testing. We gave you a lot of places to go back and get diagnostic directions. Make sure you review this enough time to fully understand it before moving on to another section.